Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the selection of a reservoir site. So as we have already seen that a reservoir is a pool of water which is accumulated when a barrier is constructed across a river. So there are few factors which help us in deciding the suitable site for a reservoir. So it is almost impossible to select a perfect ideal reservoir site because if we are satisfying one criteria there will be a deviation from the other. So to check all the parameters it would be rather impossible to have that kind of site. So we would select such a site which is giving us maximum parameters as in which are getting correct. So the first one is this suitable site dam which is available. So first of all we should have the availability of the site. If we are not having the site availability in the area where we want to construct a reservoir then we cannot have a perfect site. Then this site which we have occupied the cost of the dam that is generally a controlling factor in the selection of a reservoir site. Now what is this dam? So I have told you that if a river is flowing we construct a barrier to accumulate the water behind it. Now this barrier which is constructed on the river that is known as the dam. So how big is a dam? The cost of that construction it is the controlling factor in the selection of a reservoir site. Then the next factor is the geological formations for the reservoir banks, walls etc. They should be such as to entail the minimum leakage. So what we are having if this is the channel and these are the walls. So this is the cross sectional view. So from this side if this is the pool of water there should be minimum leakages. There should be no cracks and if there are any it should be as minimal as possible. First of all there should not be any cracks or the fissures in the rocks. Otherwise there will be mostly the seepage losses and they account usually 5 to 40 percent of the total losses. Then the site selected should be in such a way that the evaporation losses they are also the minimal. The geology of the catchment area means the features the geographical features that are present in the area they should entail minimum water losses through the absorption and the percolation. That means the water which is absorbed by the surrounding walls, the side walls that should be minimum. The seepage losses that should also be minimum. Now these are other than the, this is the factor which is different than the previous one which was having the no fissures or the cracks in the geological rocks so as to have the minimum leakages. Then the site should be such that a deep reservoir is formed. Now this is an important condition because if a deep reservoir is constructed that is preferred to a shallow one because of the lower land cost per unit of capacity it would be having less evaporation losses and it would be having the less possibility of the weed growth. How is that? That we will see. So we are having two of the structure. Let's say this is the one type of reservoir. Other one is the deep reservoir. Now if we are having the same volume for both the reservoirs. This is the shallow one and this is the deep one. So for the shallow one we would be requiring more area 
the catchment area would be very high in this case for example if we want to have let's say 100 cubic meter of the volume of the water in it then let's say in the shallow one we are having the 10 meter height so that means the area required will be 10 square meter similarly in the deep one if we are having 20 meter then the area required will be 5 square meter so if we are having lesser area that means the lesser area is exposed to the sunlight or to the atmosphere because of which the evaporation losses in case of the deep reservoir they will be lesser than the evaporation losses in case of the shallow reservoirs the area requirement that would be lesser in case of deep reservoir and the weed that grows on the surface of the reservoir so if the surface area is low that means the weed growth will also be low in case of the deep reservoir then the next factor is that the reservoir site that must have the adequate capacity that means if we want to design the particular reservoir for a certain amount of flood that capacity must be available with the reservoir then next factor is that too much silt laden tributaries should be avoided as far as possible otherwise what will be happening let's say this is the dam behind which the pool of water is created so if the silt laden tributaries are joining that silt will be accumulated on the bed and slowly and gradually this silt will be accumulating and will be having a magnifying thickness so that would reduce the pool of water initially if we were having this much depth of the water available now the depth would be reduced so because of this reason the silt laden tributaries should be avoided the next one is that the reservoir basin that should have a deep narrow opening in the valley so that the length of the dam is minimum that we have already seen then the next factor is that the site should be such that a deep reservoir is formed and the reason is to minimize the evaporation losses that is the main concern the next factor is deep reservoir that would store more of the water and would expose minimum area at the surface which would result in the lesser evaporation then if earthen dam is proposed to be constructed now what is this earthen dam so the dam which is constructed with the locally available material and usually mostly this is the soil that we are talking about so if the earthen dam is constructed this separate suitable site for spillway works should be available because what happens if this is the dam site if this is the dam then we provide this spillway within the body of the dam through which the water will be coming out but if it is made up of the soil then we try to avoid the spillway within the body of the dam otherwise it would flow the soil along with it and that's why we provide this spillway separately along with the earthen dam then reservoir site should be well connected by the rail or the road so as to have the inspection regularly materials for the construction of the dam that should be available nearby and that is valid for any kind of construction the soil formation at the reservoir site that should be free from the harmful salts otherwise that may react with the concrete or the material that we are using for the construction of the reservoir then if the reservoir water is to be used for the irrigation purposes the dam site should be near the area 
proposed to be irrigated the area it should not happen that we are having the humongous cost so as to have the to supply the water to the area which is under irrigation so if the dam is available near the irrigation site then it would reduce the length of the canal system and it would consequently reduce the cost of the project then the human factor is that it should not submerge the habited area or the areas of the fertile lands or the gardens otherwise we have to provide the rehabilitation so that is harmful from the two sides because it would induce more cost as well as it would be inhuman to rehabilitate the people which are living in those areas and last one is that the river banks should be hard strong and high so that the cost on the river training works which are to reduce the erosion because of the flowing water that should be minimum now considering all of these factors we select a suitable site for the construction of the reservoir and we provide the dam across the river as at those sites now when the pool of water is constructed then what are the different water zones which are available which are there within the pool of water or the reservoir that we will see in the next class so thank you